Hey everybody, in this Icon Basics tutorial we're going to talk about viewport navigation. So the viewport is the uh, window that you see on your screen in the middle right here and we're going to talk about how you can navigate your camera uh, through this viewport in various ways. Now to start off I want to make sure that you have this select cursor uh, activated over here. You can also use the Q hot key right here. Okay, select. And uh, we don't want to have anything selected in the scene to start. So I'm going to go over to my scene manager and make sure that we have nothing selected. Currently we have the camera selected. I'm going to click in this gray area down here and that'll deselect everything in the scene. And we're going to talk about why in just a moment here. So let's talk about the basics of viewport navigation first, which are these three uh, buttons up here. Okay, the first one is zoom. You can also use the Z hotkey for zoom. Okay, if you click that, your cursor will change to a zoom cursor and you can left click and drag and zoom in and out. Pretty basic stuff, okay. Uh, hopefully nothing more needs explaining there. And the second one over here is the pan tool. You can use the X hotkey as well to uh, activate this one. You can see here's the pan. And if you left click and drag, you'll go back and forth, uh, up and down, from side to side, up to down, up and down. You won't go any closer to your objects. Okay, you won't be zooming. The next one over here is orbit. Okay, and we'll talk about the uh, second one here, roll, in a separate camera tutorial. But for now, we're only going to deal with orbit. Okay, and orbit, if you left click and drag, you will orbit your scene. Now you're probably wondering, what are we orbiting in this case? Well, if you don't have anything in your scene selected, you're going to be orbiting the scene route, which is indicated by this little red, green, and blue axis over here. Uh, if you don't have that on your screen, you can press Control A, okay, to activate that or deactivate it, to show it or hide it on your scene, okay. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to keep that on there, okay. Now, if you have your orbit selected, and maybe you click on your curve man, for example, uh, if you click once, nothing will happen. If you click twice, double click it, you'll select it, okay? And now if we left click and drag to orbit, we will be orbiting around Curve Man, okay? Curve Man can be found in the uh, Curve Editor uh, uh, plugin, in case you're wondering, okay? So we can now navigate around him. If we select this uh, green sphere over here, double click it, we can navigate around, or orbit rather, around the green sphere. Okay, so those are your three basics. What I recommend doing is normally just having select selected. I'm going to show you a couple of really cool hotkeys here, really useful that are you know much better than always going up here or using the X, uh, Z, and C hotkeys. What I like to do is I like to hold down the Alt key. Okay, this is very important. Hold down Alt and left click and drag your mouse. And you can see when we hold Alt and left click and drag, you will pan. Okay, this is your panning tool, a really sh a shortcut for panning. If I hold Alt and I right click and drag, I'm going to be orbiting. Okay, so holding Alt and right click and drag will orbit up and down and around. Okay, and holding Alt and both mouse buttons, you can zoom in and out. Okay, just like this. All right, so those are a lot more uh, faster, I think. Uh, I, I normally use this this method myself, but to each their own. Okay, now another little tip here, if you want to zoom in and out of your scene really quickly, if you have a really big scene and you need to zoom out really fast, uh, you can uh, hold Alt and Shift and click both mouse buttons at the same time. And if you hold Alt and Shift and you zoom in and out, it'll zoom in and out a lot faster. Okay, alternately, instead of uh, clicking both mouse buttons, you can roll your mouse wheel, okay, the same way as well, okay. Uh, if I don't use hold Alt and Shift, it'll go a lot slower, just like this. In addition to those basic navigation tools, we also have the hotkeys over here. So on, in this little selection box, you can select this, and you can see there's a number of different views. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually select Curve Man over here, and we're going to go and test these. So front, if we press that, you can see it goes to his front. It automatically zooms right to his front there. To the side, we have that S hotkey, whoops, and G is a top view. Okay, so these are just different views of your character. A is the left view. And there's bottom, back, and uh, J is very useful for when you're doing facial animation for your character. Okay, you can just click that, and it'll go to your face view. And the K key is basically an overall view of your entire scene. Okay, just like this. Um, it's kind of very similar to this one over here. If we select, uh, if we have, uh, for example, Curve Man selected, and we click Home, it's going to give us a 45 degree angle view of Curve Man. Okay. If you want to see the 45 degree angle, you can just press Control G to turn on your grid. You can see we're basically at a 45 degree angle to the uh, to the grid there. Okay, Control G and turn that off there. And we can also go to Center. 
Now, if we have center, nothing happens in this case. But if we have, you know, for example, we're way over here and we click on that uh, button and go center, it's basically going to center that object or that uh, character in the center of our screen. It's not going to zoom in. It's going to have the same distance. Whereas if we use the home, it's going to give us a close up just like this. Okay. And uh, like I mentioned before, these are, there's hotkeys for all of these, uh, shortcuts. So A, S, D, and F are your, uh, our front views, 360 views. And then there's G, which is the above view. H doesn't do anything, but there's J, which is the front view. Okay. Or the facial view, rather, which is, uh, you very useful. I use it all the time when doing facial animation. Okay, so I'm going to hold Alt and uh, click both my mouse buttons to zoom out here. Now, there's one uh, little useful tip I wanted to mention here as well, which is zoom to mouse cursor, okay? Now, to get to this, you need to go to your preferences, which you can access by go pressing Control-P. Okay, I like to use this hotkey for Control-P, your preferences. And under Control, you will find a zoom to mouse position, okay? So if you have this selected and we close this down, if we zoom, if we scroll our mouse button to zoom, we're going to zoom to wherever our mouse cursor is. Okay, so let's go ahead. Normally, if we zoomed, we'd zoom directly ahead. Okay, but since we have zoom to mouse cursor selected, if I have my mouse cursor over here at Curve Man and I zoom in, we're going to zoom to him. Okay, and if I have my mouse cursor over here on the left, maybe up by this uh, green ball over here, we're going to zoom to the ball. Okay. So that's a really useful little tip there. If you want to, uh, you know, zoom into particular areas of your screen, I'm going to press Control P and activate my preferences again and deselect zoom to mouse position because I don't normally use it myself. However, you might. Okay, let's take a quick look at the other things in the uh, camera toolbar. Okay, this one here is the mini viewport. You can also use the F8 hotkey. Basically, this is used for looking at your scene in different angles for when you're doing animations or various positioning and stuff like that. We'll talk about this in a separate camera tutorial for now. So I'm just going to go ahead and close that. And in addition to that, there is this uh, option right here, which is your scene uh, quality, basically, the visual quality of your scene. You can change this from medium to quick mode. Okay, uh, basically, we're not going to talk about this in this tutorial too much. We'll talk about that in the visual tutorial a little bit later. But uh, if you have a very high re high resolution or high resource scene, sometimes you may want to set this to lower if your system is lagging. Okay, and if you have uh, if you're not worried about lighting, say you, for example you're only focusing on animation and your scene is like really dark or something, you can also use this option here, which is auxiliary lighting. This will just flatten everything out. Basically, there's no shadows; it's just everything is flat. Okay, pretty simple stuff. Now this over here. We're going to pass by all these, which we already covered, and go to our camera selection, okay? So as you may recall, I have a camera in my scene, which I can select over here. And right now, we're currently in the preview camera. If I switch this over, there's also a camera, okay? And this is the camera that we have in our scene. And if I go back to my preview camera, I can zoom out, and I believe my camera is somewhere over here. There it is, okay? So this is the camera, or this is the preview camera perspective, and this is the camera perspective. And switch is when you want to switch cameras throughout your project. And we'll talk about that more in the camera tutorial. Okay, and finally on the toolbar, we have the camera and object switch. I'll show you a quick sample of this. Okay, so say we have an object selected and we want to move this or transform it. Okay, we want to adjust the uh, parameters in here. Uh, but then we want to switch to our camera view. We can uh, press this or use the U hotkey. Okay, and it'll switch to our last selected camera in the modify panel. So you can modify the camera parameters and press U, it'll switch back to the uh, to the prop parameters, and U, 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 U. It's all about you, all right? So that's really all I wanted to show you in this viewport navigation tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you learned a couple of uh, little cool tips along the way. And uh, make sure you check out our other iClone Basics tutorials as well. And if you have any further questions, you can always go to our forums over at forum.reillusion.com. And I'll see you in the next video.